financial institutions across the globe face a rapidly changing landscape, driven by intense competition from fintechs, new business models, evolving customer demands, and an increase in compliance to ensure continuity of critical services. In order to meet these challenges, businesses are leveraging the cloud to embrace digital transformation while improving their resilience and security and enabling innovation. We're joined now by Olivia Peterson, Director of Worldwide Public Sector Financial Services at Amazon Web Services to talk about this a little bit more in detail. Hi, Olivia. Welcome to Cybos TV. Thank you for having me. Excited to share. So let's talk about how cloud computing is helping financial institutions innovate in these times of economic and geopolitical uncertainty. Yes, well, the past three years have certainly been a time of unexpected events, and um, it's really driven the need to have rapid response and rapid innovation to those new and emerging requirements. So some of the trends that we've seen across the space have really been focused on, first, data, the importance of data and having data-driven decisions. Um, so we look at that as an example with Goldman's financial cloud, the ability to analyze, organize, and make decisions on data very quickly has enabled their users to be able to respond more quickly and make those informed decisions. Um, likewise, AM, AIML, certainly a hot topic in the conference this week, um, including generative AI. That's another huge trend and an area, too, that we look at in terms of helping our customers really build responsibly, leveraging these tools. But we've got some great examples already in the industry. So looking at Bloomberg GPT, also built entirely on AWS, is focused again on the financial services needs and use cases, but leveraging custom models to bring in, in combination with our AI ML services, to be able to drive those capabilities. Um, in addition, as we look at AI ML and looking at some of the use cases, it's really being driven by fraud detection, improvement to customer experience, and really just the overall digitalization, again, and making strong data-informed decisions. Um, a great example of that is Briterian, who's a MasterCard company, um, who built their fraud detection on AWS, and as a result, were able to increase their detection of fraud by 3x and reduce their identification of false positives by 10x. So a great accomplishment there. And then last but certainly not least, looking at data sovereignty. So really having sovereignty and ownership both of data and services. And really at AWS, what we focus on is sovereign by design and also making sure that we're not only focused on the compliance requirements that each of our customers has to face, um, but also as a roadmap, making sure that we're supporting ongoing sovereignty and control of data. So how can the industry trust it can operate core services in the cloud uh, with the, the appropriate soundness and operational resilience required uh, for these critical systems? Yes, well, you know, as we mentioned opening up to just looking at resiliency, that is one of the key drivers that we've seen in terms of financial institutions moving to the cloud. Um, and looking at our footprint at AWS, we have 32 distinct regions that operate according in compliance with data sovereignty requirements. We have 102 different availability zones, which are comprised of multiple data centers and drive over 550 different places and points of presence that we have. So leveraging that footprint helps ensure resiliency in the architecture, and that's something that we really drive and focus on as part of just the architectural review and guidance that we give with our customers. Mm. So that's a big piece. Security is always job zero for us because it starts with a secure foundation, particularly as you look at financial data and just the importance of, of keeping that in a highly secured environment. So again, we're constantly investing in those tools in a way that many of our customers have attested to the fact that it's far more secure because they're able to stay current, they're able to have the monitoring and visibility that they need across their service usages, mm -hmm. and also leverage some of what we have in terms of monitoring to have some of the detection of those incidents and to be able to respond very quickly. So leveraging those two as the foundation is critical. 
And then, of course, it's also critical to be able to gain the confidence of not only the technical leaders, but also the business leaders. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we really lean into very early on, particularly with mission critical applications, where we have plenty of examples of that now in the financial services industry. And you know, making sure that from the very beginning, we're aligned to ensure mission success. Mm -hmm. You talked about uh, AFIs moving core systems to AWS. Uh, can, you, can you give us some examples of, uh, uh, of its biggest impact across the industry? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a few examples that I think will be close um, to many is first NASDAQ. So NASDAQ um, and with NASDAQ and in partnership, we co-designed a low latency edge computing solution in order to be able to support their exchanges and migration over to the cloud. So that is something that we began the process of about two years ago um, and great success in continuing to move those exchanges and just by uh, virtue of, of just understanding the, the impact of that. NASDAQ is the most heavily traded U.S. exchange. So just looking at being able to handle that volume and also scale elastically as you have volatility as, as we've seen over the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, another good example out of Brazil, working with the Central Bank of Brazil and their instant payment requirements and um, Banco Eroa in looking at what they were able to do in terms of delivering real-time payment solutions to their customers and complying with the central bank's requirements around real-time payments. Um, out of that, they support up to 21 million transactions a day and also support 140 million different citizens. So it really also brings that access across the board. That's 80% of all adults in Brazil touch this payment system. Mm. So the fact, again, that that's also all delivered on AWS is something that was really critical to be able to ensure that you have availability, consistency, resiliency. Um, those are just a, a couple of the examples that we have there. Um, another one, too, that's close in our United States markets is Capital One, who, of course, is a top 10 U.S. bank. And Capital One began their journey to exit out of all eight of their data centers, which they completed in 2022. And as a result, there's, there's lots of data just to show how they've not only improved performance, time to market with new products and innovation, they've improved their customer experience, um, and then they've also just improved their controls environment and their, their resiliency there too. Mm. And finally, Olivia, what lines should financial institutions be thinking on in taking advantage of cloud computing to meet the, the ever-changing customer needs? Yeah. In our experience, the most, place, the most important place to start from is to understand what are the desired outcomes. What are you working backwards from? At Amazon, we've always looked at not the, the build up, but what are you working backwards from and making sure that you have alignment and set goals there for that vision that support both the business and technology. So working backwards from those goals. Um, I also encourage you know, institutions to reach out and leverage us as a partner to help support them in terms of working backwards from those goals and understanding what's important around governance, how you evolve your operating model, as well as some of the key aspects around data, which set the right foundation to give you that, that broad scale. Well, if those institutions want to reach out in person, they're certainly in the right place here in Toronto. Olivia, thank you so much for your time on Cybus. Thank TV. you, I appreciate it. Uh, that's Olivia Peterson, Director of AWS Worldwide Public Sector Financial Services.